Hi everyone, welcome to another uh, tutorial on 3ds Max. Today we are going to look at how to render a scene so that you get an output as an image. Uh, to, do that, uh, to do this, we are going to learn how to add cameras, how to add lights, and then how to render the scene uh, so that you get uh, shadows uh, and a nice uh, looking output. Uh, this is a basic tutorial. <clears throat> we are going to look at other advanced lighting uh, uh, and rendering options at a later stage. So uh, just learn the basics and then uh, look forward to another tutorials on uh, more advanced lighting. So let us get started. We are going to use uh, the first project we worked on, which is the car, uh, to add lights to uh, that project. So open that file and we'll get started. So I'll go to File, Open, and I'll open the project. So this was the project we created first. What I will do is I will select all the objects. I'll go to group, group and call it a car. So it will be easier for me to select the object as a whole and move it. As there were many parts to this car. Okay. Now we need to add a camera to our scene. So in the perspective view, simply you can uh, find a good angle that you like and then use Control C uh, on your keyboard uh, to add a camera to your scene. If you look at the top view, you'll see that a camera has been added and your perspective has become camera one. So I will undo this. So you can see it says perspective here. So if I use control C, then the camera gets added and then the perspective becomes camera. Now, whenever you add a camera, you should think about a human perspective. Right now, the camera is quite high up. For example, if this is a car, then a human being will be uh, this tall okay but the camera is coming from like a first floor or second floor of a building so we need to move the camera down okay so if you select the camera you can simply move it down and give it a more human perspective we'll zoom in close so that we only focus on the car and then you can move around to get a nice angle Okay, so if you, I'll zoom in this window, in the top view, you can see there is a camera which you can move and then there is also a camera target. So you can adjust the target as well. So if I zoom out and then if you move the target, you can see that the, where the camera is pointing can also be changed. So if you move it in the y-axis, you can move the camera up and down. And here you can move left to right. And then you can move the camera up and down to get different angles. Okay. Now, if you go to play camera one, what, what happens here is that uh, when you make the perspective big or small, You don't really know what area exactly is going to get rendered when you hit this render button. Okay, so now you can see that the Jeep is seen properly. But if you <clears throat> so it's elongated now, but if you render, it still looks the same. So it's not very clear what exactly is going to get rendered. So what you can do is go to the camera option and here you can click on show save frame. Okay. So now here you will always, no matter how big or small you get, your camera rectangle will never change. Okay. Now what we are going to do is we are going to decide what size render we want. So generally uh, most of the uh, digital displays are in HD. 
so it is better to render your output in a HD format so if you click on render setup this button here is for render setup uh, we are using the default scan line renderer this is the render button viewport we are using the camera and we can click on the lock button so that uh, for example if you did not lock then this becomes the front view and then you can by mistake render the front view but if you select the perspective and lock it even if you select the front view the render will always be in the perspective view okay or the camera view now here is the output size so you can change it here or you can select a custom so the last option is HDTV and this 1920 by 1080 which is slightly bigger I will go with 1280 by 720 okay so you can see how the rectangle changes <coughs> now even if you click on any of these the ratio remains the same so it's not the window is not going to change the only output size is going to change okay and then if you render it you get a much wider render so again once you change that you need to position your camera so the car is in the middle and then here you can see there's a render option and it says production render production there are other options as well but we will only look at the basics required to complete this tutorial uh, when I uh, teach my classes I tend to teach project wise so whatever is necessary for the project you will only learn that there are millions of things to learn in 3ds max and you cannot learn everything at one time and it can get overwhelming when you're learning a new tool when you simply click on options and there is no output so it is better to focus on the output and in the process learn various tools to get that out okay so having said that now our camera is set uh, if you render what you see is you get a lot of black background okay <clears throat> so our scene needs a floor for the car to sit on all right so we will add a plane as a floor for the car so if you go to uh, standard primitives we will create and we'll zoom out so that you can create a large size plane okay so just a plane and then we will give it a white color okay and then if you render it now your car is sitting on a plane okay now when you zoom in here now you can see that your car is not exactly on the ground at least mine is not maybe yours is or your objects are but it's important that you make sure that your object is sitting on the ground or slightly inside a little bit of uh, intersection will not really affect anything but anything hanging will look will not look correct so the car is now sitting tight on the ground in, in fact I can further move it down because the wheels generally are you know flat because of the weight of the car so we can simulate that by putting the little bit of it inside okay the, the other issue is there's a black background still remaining so what we will do is we will create another plane in the front view it's also quite big and then we will make it white as well and I will move it back and in the side and you can even rotate it so it is parallel with the camera oh sorry perpendicular to the camera and then you can also rotate the plane and then it can be moved further so that way you get a line here you can move it a little further if you want depending on where you want the horizon line to be so if you render it now you get a complete picture now we will add lights if you go to the create panel the third option is lights and we are using standard lights again there are 
uh, different options so we are only going to look at standard lights and that too we are going to look at the target spot and the omni light so we'll look at the target spotlight first I'll zoom into the car and you can create your lights in any viewport like in the standard primitives but I like to create uh, my lights in the top view again there is a standard uh, uh, practice that you should follow uh, but once with experience you can do things differently as well so if you click and drag now if you look at the camera if you, for example if you are taking picture outside you will always see that the sun is behind you so the object uh, that you're capturing is not in shadow so same way if you consider an imaginary plane here between the camera and the object then the light has to be on this side not on the on this side otherwise the highlighted areas will be not visible and shadows will be in the front we want the shadows to be in the back and the light to shine on the object so where the camera is it can be from here or here but if I put it from here then the shadows will go nice here if I put it here then the, again the sum of the shadows will be in the front so I'll click and drag to add the light now the light is flat on the ground so we want to simulate a sunlight so it's going to come from high up and then if you render it now you will see that there is light in the scene if you go to modify panel again there are lots of options so we will only look at the basic ones uh, the multiplier by default in your case should be one I had modified it so it was less so I'll change the multiplier so you have to look at the in intensity of the light and then change the multiplier to one and then if you render it you'll get nice bright color you can see that there is a dark area here we are going to look at some parameters of the light <coughs> uh, one of the things that your light has is a hot spot and a fall off so this is like a point light this is like a light that is coming from actually a bulb we are using it uh, this is not the very ideal situation to create lighting uh, because uh, an outdoor scene you, you need a sunlight simulation however we are learning the basics so we will use this uh, for our scene to understand how lights work so you can see that there is a hot spot and a fall off so if you make the hot spot and fall off same for example if I make it 50 50 and in case in your case it should be the same because when you get started those numbers are the hot spot and fall off is quite close to each other so if you render it you'll see that you get a very hard edge to your shadow so the, sh the light starts here and then it stops immediately uh, um, away from the light so there there is like the hot spot and then the fall off so the distance between hot spot and fall off is very less what you can do is you can simply drag your hot spot up and then drag it down because once you drag your hot spot up your fall off also goes up so now what we are doing is we are increasing the distance between the hot spot and the fall off so you can see that the fall off is much bigger and then if you render it you will see that the entire scene gets light because the light is falling off far away from the hotspot <coughs> the other thing you will notice is there are no shadows yet so there is an option to turn on your shadows so if you look at shadows you turn the shadows on and again there are many types of shadows so we are not really bothered about that we will just use the shadow map and then we will render the scene and now you have shadows for your object <clears throat> now you'll see that there are some areas that are quite dark okay so if you look at the real life situation everything is visible whether the light is shining it or on it or not so there's a long explanation about lighting but in short what I want to get at is that you need another diffuse light another light that will show all parts of the object and that is what we will use an omni light for 
as we continue to uh, learn more about lighting i will explain the other concepts of lighting uh, of how light work and how to simulate real life situation in 3ds max so this light will not have any shadows and then the multiplier will be much lower so we will use it like 0.2 and then if i render it you can see that the dark areas become quite less even the shadows are not as harsh you can also reduce the intensity of your light to say 0.6 Now this light is quite close to the screen. Ah, the screen is quite far. It's here actually. We will move it further up. I guess. Okay. Now if you look at here, the tire shadow is not touching the tire. Yeah, you may not realize any uh, problem here, but I will show you one thing. I will select the light. And if you go to the shadow map parameters, okay, the bias is 1. So we will make the bias less to 0.1. And if I render, you will see that the shadow is touching the object so the bias what it does is it creates a distance between the object and the shadow all right so the, your bias has to be low and then the other thing is you will notice that this is 516 in your case so if you render that the shadows are not very sharp so if you increase that number so i'll make it one 1500 and then you will get much smoother shadows okay you cannot click on the save image button and save type as we will save it as a jpeg give it a name decide where you want to save it okay and then you get your first first image from 3ds max you can try to uh, add lighting to your other projects uh, if you are following my tutorials and practice a little bit about lighting thank you